I think everybody needs to be honest with themselves too, okay? You know, not everybody needs to get a flip phone, but you also need to make sure that you're real with yourself because a lot of times people will not be real with themselves. They'll say, I'm not addicted to my phone. I'm, and then you look at your screen time and it's like average use of phone today, five hours. You're addicted to your phone. Five hours a day? Holy F! That's literally a lot of your life. Look at this, bro. When did this come out? 90s? Like this is a hot item, bro. Like look at this flip phone. Boom. 96. 96 or something like that. Razor. If you had a Razor back in the day, you were kind of balling out. That's cool. But I still have some beef with the iPhone, dude. The iPhone is too good. Back to the Razor. Hey, what up, bro? <laughs> Welcome back to the videos. Oh, I'm driving in the car. I'm back home in California. If you guys didn't know, I'm in LA. I'm excited because I got to see my family and friends. It's been really cool because I've been traveling for about five or six months. Actually five, four or five months. And it was amazing, bro, to get out into the world and see it. But what you realize when you're traveling alone is that family and friends are more important than anything. Literally. I could see the Eiffel Tower. I could see anything in the world. You know, Machu Picchu, the pyramids of Egypt. But it doesn't really matter unless you're sharing it with people that you love, for real. It's great to travel alone, and it's necessary sometimes for adventure, but five months, that's a little aggressive. You know, because two, three weeks is cool alone. If you need it, you know, you're like, hey man, I really want to get my adventure on. If you're going for five months, it's better to be with friends, experience the world together. So that's kind of what I learned. I learned that family and friends are the most important thing in my life, and I had to be away from them to relearn that. You know, I always knew that growing up, but when you're away from your people for so long, you realize how important they are to you. And for the past couple weeks, I've just been hanging out with my mom, my dad, my sisters. I've seen lots of my good friends that are back here in LA and Orange County, and I've just enjoyed going to the beach with them, riding bikes with them, kind of just sitting around and not doing much. As you can tell from my channel, I haven't been posting a lot of videos, and this happens a lot in my life where I just sit down, and I'm like, dude, What's more important, posting videos or hanging out with the people that you love most? You can do both. You can post videos and you could hang out with them. So yes. Yeah, I'm still just navigating life as a human being. As we all know, that is not necessarily as easy as you thought it would be. Especially as you get older, you know, you get out of college, you gotta figure out what you wanna do, you gotta figure out what kind of job you wanna have for the rest of your life. And you don't have to make decisions that are lifelong when it comes to jobs. You can obviously make YouTube videos and then get a normal job and see which one you like better. But I'm still navigating that. I'm not married yet. I'm not engaged yet. I'm not dating yet. So that gives me a little bit more freedom than most people. But I definitely am a little more keen to look into that since traveling for five months because sharing life with somebody is a good thing. And I think as you get older, you grow into that. You know what I mean? I just never really got to thinking that I want to date somebody yet. But now that I come back home, I could see the benefit of having somebody that I can say, yo, you wanna travel with me, huh? And then we just go together. But yeah, it's still not really on my radar, but I'm just kinda updating you guys. Uh, what else is new, man? What else is new? I got the q and I asked on my Instagram uh, a Q&A a couple weeks ago, I think it was, right when I got back, and I hadn't filmed the video, so I'm just gonna film it right now. I'm on my way down to Mission Viejo. Guess what I'm doing? I'm actually getting a flip phone. Guys, this is gonna change my life, I think, for the better. You know, I have this iPhone right here, and I don't have a SIM card, so I've been living for the past two years with no SIM card, and what that means is that whenever I get Wi-Fi, that's when I can message people, send emails, check my Instagram if I want to, stuff like that. It's nice because right now, I don't have the opportunity to do that stuff, so I have realized that I've become a little bit better outside the house at being social in the sense where people are talking to me and I'm not on my phone because I can't be. You know, so it's super nice, so that's good, but I still have some beef with the iPhone, dude. The iPhone is too good for my liking. It can do too many things. You know what I mean? Like cell phones were originally invented so that you can call people when you're out of your house. That was the original intent. I want to go back to a uh, flip phone because flip phones, they do the thing that I want them to do. They call and they text. iPhones, my beef with them is this. I get a text message, I check the text, me text message, and then what do I do after that? Then I check Instagram messages, then I check Instagram, see who, uh, you know, is looking at my profile, creep on their profile a little bit. Four hours later, after I checked Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, and freaking YouTube, I'm just like, what the heck am I doing with my life? Makes me upset. You know what I'm saying? But then you talk to some people and they say, why don't you just control it? I must be addicted because I cannot control it and I'm willing to admit that. Have I tried it to control it? Yes, I have. And it ain't working. So you know what? I'm going to have to do what I got to do. I'm going to get a flip phone. I'm going to leave my iPhone at home and... Uh, there are some things on the iPhone that are beneficial for me as a traveler. The main thing being WhatsApp. You can text people from all over the world, no matter what provider or carrier you have. If you have a WhatsApp, it doesn't matter if you have a, an iPhone, an Android, if you're living in China or you're living in uh, California, you can message and call people anywhere. And that's insane, dude. The iPhone has definitely proved its worth, but it is more detrimental, I think, to my life than positive. 
this is what I feel about iPhones sometimes. Sometimes it's better that they look like that. You know what I mean? And that's hard for me to say because a lot of good things have come out of the iPhone. So yeah, that's like what I'm going through with the social media thing. Um, this is me driving, by the way. Look. California, baby, we're in the suburbs. So I am in Orange County right now. This is about 45 minutes south of the big city, Los Angeles, that most people around the world know and that I tell most people I'm from because when I'm traveling around the world, not a lot of people know, do, do a lot of people know Orange County? You guys have to let me know that, but definitely more people know Los Angeles, so I always just tell people I'm from LA, but in reality, I'm from here. It's Orange County, it's a little bit quieter of a town, and if you visit LA, I would definitely recommend, no matter where you're from, if you're from China, if you're from Indonesia, if you're from Germany, I definitely recommend that you come down to Orange County because the beaches, in my opinion, are much nicer, and I think you can have a good day down in Newport Beach. That's like the thing you should go see in Orange County if you only got a couple hours. Go to Newport Beach or Laguna Beach, okay? These are things that you should definitely check out, and I just missed my exit. Dang it, bro! And like I said, I'm picking up that old cell phone, dude. I'm going back to the 90s, dog. I'm gonna get a Razor. You guys remember Razor flip phones? And there's gonna be no apps in the phone. There's gonna be call and text, man. Hey, you guys uh, checked out that new feature on the iPhone where it says screen time, and then you look at it and you just ignore it because it's so horrible. You look at it, it says four and a half hours, and you're like, oh, that's, uh, oh. Oh shoot. So what if you could literally live real life for those four hours, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna do more of that. Let's get to the Q&A. This is gonna be a long video. California traffic, we're stuck right now. Together, we are together in this traffic. Look at the other side of the road. Boom, boom. That's one of the, I guess you would say downsides of California is- And I wouldn't necessarily call this a bad thing. You know, you're in traffic, but what can you do when you're in traffic? Listen to a podcast. Call your friends on your wireless cell phone so you don't get a ticket. In California, it's actually uh, against the law to call. I'm actually disobeying two laws right now. I'm filming while driving, which I'm not sure if that's a legit law, but I think if a cop saw me, they might pull me over, but they also might have better things to do. And then the second law that I'm breaking right now is I'm in the carpool lane. Look at this. This lane is for people that um, have two or more people in their car. And... Don't you know I'm human too? But in Germany, the Autobahn is like this. If you're going faster, you go in the left lane. So the people that want to go faster are in the left lane and it just continuously decreases in speed as you go to the right. And I think that is a much better way to do things because no matter if you have two people or one person, it should benefit the flow of traffic the way that you organize the freeway. And Germany is the best organization of traffic that I have come across around the world. Indonesia and places like Bangkok, oh, and India, there aren't really any laws at all. And it's actually kind of crazy. That works, because if everybody knows that the laws are, there are laws, all right, they definitely have laws for driving. But when you're comparing it to Germany and the United States even, the laws are just a lot less Obvious in certain countries that works because if everybody knows that that's how it is then what does everybody do everybody pays attention Let's get to the Q&A guys. When are you gonna come back to India? I'm actually gonna come back to India later this year because I left my motorcycle there I bought a dope cycle and I'm bummed that I don't have it here in California because I would be whipping that thing everywhere Near the beach all that stuff. So that'd be cool. What's your favorite country? I can't answer that what's my favorite country? I obviously grew up in America So I have a fond you know liking for this country because my my family and friends are here But there are so many beautiful countries in the world and I totally Agree with people who say that their country is the best because they grew up there That's where every memory they have in their life is that's where everybody that they possibly love is That's where all the food they love is like that is your country So if people have you know pride about where they come from, I think that is definitely a good thing It's kind of like loving your family and having pride that you are who you are. I'm a Sullivan So when I'm with my family at the family reunion, I'm stoked about it So it's the same thing. I love America But I also love all the countries that I have visited because I understand this I understand that these people have a sense of pride You know because their grandparents are from there and they love the food and the culture and everything So I cannot say which country I love best. Will you marry me? I don't know you. Wer miss du Deutschland? I do, man. I do miss Germany. I'm gonna be back soon, though, so. What's your favorite time of year, bro? That's tough. I like all times of year. But the holidays when family gets together is the best. Summertime's good, too, because you can go to the beach and stuff like that, but I like the times of year where the most people in my family get together, and usually that would be Christmas and Thanksgiving. So that's the time of year, the fall season that I love, because you get around people, you love the people, y'all make 
food together, you listen to music together, and it is great. So many people are saying, when are you gonna come back to India? When are you gonna come back to Indonesia? When are you gonna come back to Germany? All right, guys, I really appreciate the support, seriously. Like, the fact that so many people from those countries are watching my videos is legit. I appreciate you guys, your country. Your countries were dope enough for me to wanna go back. I will come back, but I do not have a plan yet because I'm trying to plan out just my next couple months, to be honest. I think it's gonna be awesome for a lot of people from over in Europe, over in Asia, to see my life here in California and that's something that I've never really shared with people because as someone who loves traveling when I was living in California what was my thought my thought was this Cali's dope but I grew up here for 26 years and and I want to get out and film the world but after living in the world for a few years I actually appreciate the place that I came from and there's so many cool places that you guys need to see here favorite exotic foods from other countries okay so from India you gotta try cheese naan in India is so crispy buttery soft and just cheesy man and you can't really get any better than that i would kind of relate it to some sort of cheese quesadilla but the bread is made of croissants so think about that think about a cheese quesadilla but the quesadilla is made of bread that kind of feels like a croissant you know what i mean and a little bit less cheese a little bit more butter that's bomb in indonesia what is my favorite food okay they have this thing called tador dadal gabul gabul it's like a double fried egg and you can eat it with rice and for some reason i really really enjoyed that um it's not really good on the arteries but you know what sometimes you eat food sometimes you eat food in other countries for the experience and that was definitely a good experience when i'm in germany man what do i love honestly first thing that comes to mind i get a pretzel every time the pretzels in germany are actually incredible you know that's why it became a stereotype the beer as well when you think of germany a lot of people who aren't from there they think you know they have good pretzels they have good beer and they have good bratwurst and the reason why that became a stereotype is, is because it's true and then spargle okay so in germany they have this thing called spargle and it is actually asparagus white asparagus and it grows during a specific time of the year it's delicious man because they cook it just enough where it's soft and then they put hollandaise sauce over the top Ooh, delicious what should you guys try in california that's just something that you have to try that's something that you guys should know in and out burger is definitely something that you guys should try because it is very iconic to California. You may not like it, all right? So don't expect to like it, but I think it'll grow on you. If you stay here at least a couple weeks, a month, you're gonna learn that locals love in and out Oh, tacos, bro. California has some of the best Mexican food in the world beside Mexico. This is something that I have learned because when you travel around the world, when you go to Germany, when you go to these places, Mexican food isn't really a priority for them to make when you're not in Mexico obviously you go to Indonesia you eat Indonesian food when you go to India you eat Indian food but when you go to America California especially it is actually a huge huge melting pot and you could find decent Asian food decent Indian food decent everything type food everywhere you go really it is crazy because people from these countries go directly like they live in California and I'm gonna cut this guy off because I need to oh shy Ben Keza bro I missed my freaking exit dang it bro um I was trying to go to that Carl's jr. That's where I'm meeting the guy for the phone in the Carl's Jr. But what was I saying about the food? In America, such a melting pot that you actually can find real authentic food. Like, I can go get Indian food that's just as good as the stuff in India. And the reason being, I know a lot of Indian people probably say, no, you can't. But the reason you can actually do that is because people literally move directly from India and they make the same original homemade food that they would back home so it is the same it's kind of crazy i can say the same for japanese food korean food italian food mexican food and going off of the mexican food thing you must try some cali burritos okay so cali burritos are avocado you got some beans in there i believe cheese they have french fries that's kind of like a california version of of mexican food so i think you should definitely try cali burritos and the tacos are bomb too man just some simple carne asada tacos i don't know why there's like these dots on my screen oh it's probably because i spit i do that a lot <laughs> you guys should try taco trucks as well in LA they got heck of good taco trucks instead of trying to figure your life out every second it's better to just live it in the best way that you know how at the moment and I know that sounds simple but just think about this you have knowledge in your brain I have knowledge in my brain based on all the experiences that I've had all the conversations that I've had all the books that I've read and the movies that I've watched and like the television that I've seen you know what I mean you kind of know about current events you know about eating healthy and how working out makes you feel better like we all have this basic knowledge and as you grow you get more knowledge 
But the only thing you can do in the moment right now, like for me right now, the only thing I can do is based on all the knowledge that I have right now, make the best decision that I can in this moment. So that's all I can do and that's all I encourage you to do too. Don't try to be like, oh frick, I need to figure this out. Oh no, I need to figure, oh shoot, what if I get a job? Dude, just literally in this moment, what can you do? What's the best thing you can do? What's the best job that you can have right now? What's the best thing that you can say to your friend right now if you guys are having some sort of issue? And that's all you can do. And then if there are things that you would like to learn more, then learn them. Don't let yourself not being able to understand everything right now paralyze you from doing anything at all. I'm gonna get the phone, making the exchange, giving them cash. Boom, baby, let's go. Carl's Jr. There it is, made the exchange, baby. Look at this, bro. This is literally what I have been looking for, okay? So back in the, when did this come out, 90s? Like this was a hot item, bro. Like look at this flip phone, boom. 96. 96 or something like that, Razor. If you had a Razor back in the day, you were kind of bawling out. And now I'm going back to the old school, no more iPhone. I'm just be calling people on this. Let's go. What's good, everybody? Got the flip phone, boy. Honestly, this gets me stoked. Razor. It does not have any apps, bro. I can't check my Instagram. I can't check Snapchat. I can't waste hours on the phone. All I can do is get a text message where it says, blah, blah, blah. Your friend has texted you a message. I can read it. I can reply if I want to on that old keyboard. You know what's it called? Is it called T9? We have to click one four times to get like a C. Du, 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 du. Hello, we want to, you know what I mean? So, considering that might be a little annoying, I'm just gonna say, call, boom. What's up, fam? Hey, it's, it's a new trend. Yeah, even the Kardashians are doing it. Have you seen the new episode? Oh, you don't watch TV? Yeah, me neither. So now I'm gonna go to Best Buy. Best Buy is like the big electronic store out here in my area, and I do not have maps or any Wi-Fi and phones, so guess what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to ask a human. That is a thing that we have lost in our generation. Asking other people for help. Because the phone always helps you. And, but asking real people is so much better. You know what, there's a Best Buy near here? Yeah, uh, go out of here. That was dope, bro. I literally asked the guy for directions and he gave me directions. And you know why I'm so happy about that? Because I saw in his face too, like when you ask people questions in real life, it benefits both of you guys. Like you're having interaction with humans. Then his face lights up too, cause he's like, yo, I know something that this guy doesn't know that will help him. You know what I'm saying? Like people wanna help each other. Try to talk to more people and I think your life will actually get will improve it will trend upward and that's what we're all trying to do in this life right we're trying to trend upward all right I think everybody needs to be honest with themselves too okay you know not everybody needs to get a flip phone but you also need to make sure that you're real with yourself because a lot of times people will not be real with themselves they'll say I'm not addicted to my phone I'm not, and then you look at your screen time and it's like average use of phone today, five hours. You're addicted to your phone. Five hours a day? Holy F! That's literally a lot of your life. You have to sleep for eight, five hours a day? Looking at a screen? That's freaking, that is freaking, dude. Analyze your own life and make sure that when you're older, you don't look back and say, I wish I would have. That's why I try to make decisions, you know? Certain decisions that are difficult, I think, when I'm 80, Will I be glad that I spent less time on my phone? Or would I rather have the, I don't know, most up-to-date technology and have a freaking five hour a day? Think about all those five hours stacked on top of each other. That's months and months and maybe even years of your life. That's kind of sad in my mind. So I ain't trying to do that anymore. Also, bro, I just asked someone for directions because I'm lost again. Remember I told you I'm going to Best Buy? Yeah, I'm lost, but I had to ask somebody at the gas station where to go, and I figured out this. People are dope, people are dope! I'm not just figuring this out, but like, the more you talk to people, you understand that people are dope, dude! Everybody has things that they love doing, everybody has things that they're good at, you know what I mean? Some people are comedians, some people are historians, some people are just cool to be around because they have good vibes, like, dude, the more people you're around, I think it's better. I think it's better, so. Hopefully I get to Best Buy. If you use phones for what they should be used for, then you wouldn't waste your freaking life on an iPhone. Look at your screen time and say, wow, I spent five hours today on a phone. Why? Look at his beautiful life, bro. There's a tree. There's a real tree right there. Why do you want to look at a freaking, freaking app that shows you Instagram pictures of where you want to be, where you should be, when you could just be where you are and talk to real people? Look at, I have real feet, bro. You should stop watching this video right now and go outside and talk to real people. Look at that, dude. This is so old school. Read. 
<laughs> no, I have to text like this. I gotta figure out this phone, dude. It's gonna take a while. Bro, like this is so old school. <laughs> Voice calling. Dude, this is so dope. I literally feel like I'm back in my childhood. Also, I'm gonna have to enter in all the old context, you know? One by one with the T9 calculator, I'm down with it. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. This is the sound it makes. My mom's calling. Let's see how this works. I think you just open it. Hello? Yo! It's okay. Can you hear can you hear me okay? Nice. Heck yeah. I just got it. I got the um the the Razer flip phone and now I'm just calling you into Best Buy and got a plan. Nice. Yeah, it's it's perfect. It's it's good. It it just text messages and calls and that's it. That's all I need. I got the plan from from uh from Best Buy. You just go in, it's prepaid and it's a uh, it's at and I'm not in the carpool lane. There are certain ways to live that yield the best life. For example, working out and eating healthy. These things are good. They're good for you to do. So, what we must realize is this. Regardless of what anybody else thinks, regardless of what your friends think, your family think, whatever, you know kind of what's right in life and you have to stop allowing the world to feed you sugar-coated BS. What does that mean? They say, buy this and you'll be happy. Do six minute abs and you can still have a six pack while drinking beer every day and eating sugar cookies when you feel terrible about yourself. Shut the F up, really bro. Those are just two examples, but we all know. If you eat healthy and you work out, things will be good. If you have stuff that you have to work out in a relationship with someone, you talk to them straight up and then you figure it out. If you need to do a paper, you have to sit down and do it, all right? Otherwise, it's never gonna get done. So I was just thinking about that and realizing because of the phone situation made me think about it, you know? For me, having a flip phone is gonna help me with my addiction to social media, but you can't sugarcoat things and just say, well, everyone has it, an iPhone, so I can't really go back. No, bro, do what's best for you and your life. Sometimes you gotta think about yourself sometimes, you know what I mean? Everybody's always like, think about everyone else. But you know what? When it comes to the food that I put in my body, and the, the time that I spend on my phone, I'm gonna be selfish. That's okay. I don't have to eat pie because my friends are eating pie. Mother efforts, I'm sitting around the table with you. I don't have to eat pie because you're eating pie. I don't have to have an iPhone because you freaking are pissed that my text messages don't turn blue and you can't iMessage me. You know what? If you're my friend, you're gonna support my journey. Okay, so sometimes realize that. That you have to do things and the real friends in your life will support you and they'll say I actually haven't dealt with this a ton in my life But I just know that it's very true that if you don't take care of the needs that you have such as working out and freaking paying rent And making sure you're not wasting your time then you can't be a good friend to anybody else anyways so Just figure that junk out live a healthy life and be a good friend you like that direct you like the direct statement Well, that's what it is and I'm being direct because I have to be direct to myself I'm the type of person dude who needs to be direct and I need to be, I need other people to be direct with me. Otherwise, like the friendship's not gonna be that good because, um, yeah, I just value real relationships and real talking and I can't really deal with things that are around the bush, I guess. And I'm still working on that too. Sometimes you don't wanna hurt people's feelings and it's hard to just say, look, you have a problem, fix it. But at least for myself, when I look in the mirror at myself, you know because I think I'm my first best friend when it comes to people who are living with me. God is in my heart and he's the person that I always try to ask the opinion of and sometimes I'm not the best at doing that, so I need to improve! But these are the kind of conversations I have in the mirror of myself. Always honest. I'm never looking in the mirror look saying, Connor, you look okay today. When I freaking have eaten McDonald's eight days in a row and I look at my stomach and I'm like, yo, that looks a little doughy. I gotta be honest with myself. And that's a true statement. If I'm sitting in my room just not doing what I think I should do when it comes to business, then I look in the mirror and I say, bro, what the frick, you freaking lazy bum? Get your butt up. And that's good to say sometimes. And also, it's good to have friends that are able to speak to you like that too. Maybe not in that sense, but at least have a friend that says, dude, Connor, you said that you have dreams. You said that you have dreams of traveling. You said that you have dreams of YouTube. You said that you have dreams of whatever. Why aren't you doing it? You're being a lazy bum. Praise God for friends like that. And try to find more of them, because they'll help you. You know what they're gonna do? Those are the type of friends that when you get older, you're 60 and 70 years old, that they're, you're like, holy crap. Those people changed my life. So first of all, be that person for yourself, and then try to find friends that will, um, you know, be accountability partners as well. So I appreciate those types of people. Let's get back to the Q&A. Boom, baby, let's go. When my camera dies, 
it'll be over. What do you take for granted? I talked about it a little bit. I take my family for granted sometimes and friends. You don't think about them all the time because you're like, all right, everybody's doing their own thing. Um, but you should not take them for granted. Get a flip phone and call them every week. Now, what else do I take for granted? I take youth and energy and health for granted too. And as I get older, I am taking it for granted less and less because I realize that very small things affect my body differently, you know? Like if I eat McDonald's, for example, I feel very crappy and I'm like, wow, why would I ever do my body wrong by putting in some terrible stuff? Youth and health is one of the best things in the world. I think health is the number one thing that God gave us. On top of life, obviously, you need life to have health. But once you have a life, keep yourself healthy, dude. I took that for granted. And no matter how old you are, you can still take your health in the current state for granted because guess what? The end result of every one of our health is death. And if you're not at death yet, you're in good health. And if you're in good health, make it better by eating better food, okay? That's what I take for granted. Do you get health checkups when traveling? I haven't been getting health checkups when traveling, okay? That goes along the same lines. When I come back to the States, I get health checkups though. I go to the doctor and I say, yo, what kind of cancers do I got now from eating all this food everywhere? When do I come back to the US? I'm here now. Can you please go to Vegas? That would be amazing. You know what? That'd be a funny vlog. So I got some friends out here that I film with. One of them is Danny. Duncan, George, and all these guys, and I definitely want to take you guys around SoCal first, and then maybe we'll branch out to Las Vegas. Maybe we can make a trip to New York City. Maybe we can make a trip to Florida, Texas. Those are places that are cool, man. And like I said before, I'm beginning to realize that the United States has a lot to offer, and I've traveled the world enough to understand that no matter where you are, you can always find a new place, whether that's going to a new restaurant down the street, or just, you know, going with a friend to some place that you've never been. And that's how you guys should travel. You should really make it a point to uh, just get out of your neighborhood and, and do things that you wouldn't normally do on an average day. So yes, Vegas, that was the question. Moving on. I'm pursuing a degree, but my heart lies in traveling and uh, exploring places, what to do. Well, what you should do is get your degree. You know, make sure you get your degree. And that's a good thing to have. And you could always travel while, you have, while you're going for a degree. You know, I don't think that you have school every day. Um, and I think you probably at least have a week off, so plan your days accordingly, you know? Not everybody can travel every weekend, but um, if you have some time off, just be disciplined enough to say, yo, five weeks from now or five months from now, I got a week off, I'm going to spend the extra money that I saved from not drinking alcohol with my friends every weekend um, and forgetting um, all the pain that I'm going through while studying for a degree with my friends, and I'm gonna save that money and go travel. That's what I did when I was in college. I got my degree first. Um, but I did travel when I had time, so that's what you should do. Get your degree, be a you know valuable citizen and, and be able to have a degree so when you are done traveling, you'll have a job, or when you start traveling, you can start your own business, you know? It doesn't hurt to have a degree. But then just, uh, yeah, make sure you use your time wisely. Is happiness something to be achieved or does it come from our perspective of things? That's a very, very good question. You know what? I think happiness is something that comes from your perspective. It's not something you, you can achieve, I don't think. Because if that were true, then I would never be sad again. You know why? Because I've accomplished everything I want to accomplish. You know how I accomplished it? By putting in the freaking work. I wanted to go play college sports, I did. It took a lot of effort. It was great, I had a good time. But does it make, does it give me Happiness 24-7? No. I have the, the you know the self-satisfaction and the peace in knowing that I gave my best effort. That is something to work for. I think peace of mind is something that we should all work for, and it's something that you can, you know, attain through hard work, having peace of mind. But I think true happiness is a perspective, you know? You don't have to be able to travel to be happy. You don't have to play college sports to be happy. You don't have to have, you know, a mom and dad to be happy. Otherwise, people people's happiness would be written off. It would be like, you know what? If you didn't make your college sports team, then your happiness is gone. And all the happiness you ever thought you could have is no longer attainable, you know what I mean? So, no, happiness is not something to be attained. It is peace of mind. And right now, in this situation right now that I'm in, and in the situation that you're in, I could honestly tell you that there is happiness available to you. Even though you might be in pain, there are ways to understand that you're a living human being, you go through pain, but you are happy, and you are, you know, you're honestly thankful for the life that you've been given. And if you're thankful for the life that you've been given, I think happiness will come as a result of you having the perspective of being thankful. And this is why I talk often about my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. 
I believe that God made everything, you know? I just don't think that I'm here talking to you on a camera, able to drive a car with a brain that works. I don't think that's an accident, you know what I mean? It just is too, it's too crazy for it to be an accident. And the fact that I have my own YouTube channel, and I also, there's people staring at me in the car over there, so like I lost my train of thought, and I have to be better at talking when people are looking at me. But basically what I was trying to say is this. I believe that after reading the Bible, I read it all the way through, and I know that I'm not somebody who can just say, look, God is real, and you're just going to believe. But I can be somebody who plants a seed in your mind and just says this. If you are unhappy, if there are times in your life where you don't know why the frick you are here, I can honestly tell you that reading the Bible and understanding that there is a God that loves everyone that made us for a purpose, and although there are bad things that happen in the world, these are... I can't explain everything, but the bad things that happen in the world are because there is also evil in the world. And there has to be, you know, good and evil for you to have a choice. If there was only good, then you wouldn't have a choice. You know, and people would say, you know what, God is enslaving me, but he's not. He, he allows you to choose whatever you want. And good and evil can be as simple as, do I want to eat this cupcake right now or do I want to eat a very healthy meal? In my eyes, the good thing to do, the thing that God would probably want you to do is eat a healthy meal take care of your body. But the evil thing, so to speak, would be eat a cupcake. Because what happens? When you eat cupcakes over 10 gears every single hour of the day, then you get diabetes. Uh, you know what I mean? So like, a lot of this stuff is our choice. We choose to eat cupcakes. We choose to not go to school. And then what do we do? We get expelled, all right? That's not God's fault. You just chose that, okay? And I know that there's situations that are not God, like your fault, you know what I mean? But I'm not talking I can't talk to every situation, otherwise I wouldn't be able to say anything, okay? All I'm saying is this, you have a choice. There are choices that are good, there are choices that are bad. There is good, there is evil, but God is good, and every good thing that you see, the family that you love, the body that you have, the health that you have, the music that you, you know, enjoy, like, all the good things are from God. And I could say that I have peace of mind because of that, and I don't even know where I started this tangent, but I'm gonna go to the next question. What do you do for a living? Actually, I do this for a living. I, YouTube, and the jobs that I get off of YouTube do support me full time and I am thankful to you guys for that. And I'm definitely gonna hustle. Shoot man, after talking to me and myself in this video, just get on my grind, dude. This is what I've wanted to do forever. And the cool thing about YouTube is that it can parlay into other parts of life. You know, I don't have to just be a traveler. I can, you know, work at Whole Foods and I can film my, or I can work at Best Buy and I can just film my escapades at Best Buy, helping people. Thanks for the help. You're so welcome. Yo. Welcome to Best Buy. This is how we do it here. 